El Dorado International Airport, Bogota, Colombia. Security threats, illegal immigration, and contraband. Every airport has its fair share. But El Dorado is special. It's Colombia's biggest airport and one of the busiest in Latin America. The officials here are on the front lines for containing Colombia's most infamous export, cocaine. And smugglers will try anything to move their product. With a flight departing every seven minutes, officers race against the clock to put a stop to illegal activity. 24-7, 365, the flights never stop. Nor does the work of the men and women of El Dorado's airport security. Bogota, Colombia. El Dorado International Airport. On the tarmac, a flight to Barcelona prepares for takeoff. This is considered a critical flight. More passengers are busted for cocaine heading to Spain than any other country. Officials use drug-sniffing dogs to inspect the checked baggage. Come in. Come in. In your... One of the dogs reacts to a bag and the next stage of the security process begins. This case emerged during our usual inspection procedure for international flights. A drug-sniffing dog positively alerted for drugs. Once the bags are verified, they are taken to the reconciliation room and reunited with their owners so that they can be present during the inspection of the bags. The passenger is called and the passenger goes to the airline's check-in desk. We explain the procedure to follow, which in this case means they accompany us to witness the inspection of their luggage for narcotics. While in the reconciliation room, the passenger and his wife exhibit very normal behavior, very calm. God-fearing, because the woman was wearing a rosary, she was praying, and the man acted very comfortable. Some Ecuadorian citizens have layovers here in Colombia. It is very rare to find drugs on connecting flights, but nevertheless they are inspected. <laughs> the passenger explains to us that those shoes were given to him by someone to give to a member of her family. So the passenger agreed to take them, and those are the shoes that will be inspected.
Comienza Felipe 5 hacia 6. Que ya le solicito a la policía. Ya está llegando en el body scan room. Officers detained two passengers whose profile caught the eye of the anti-narcotics police. The woman has ingested something. She swallowed foreign elements that could contain narcotics. Now, with the man's X-ray image, we find that he too is carrying ingested drugs. Body scan images suggest that both passengers are carrying drug capsules in their stomachs. The passengers will now be charged and their case eventually brought before a judge. This case is quite common for international flights. These people go through security together, state that they've known each other for a long time, even that they are a couple or family members. But once they are asked a few questions, it becomes clear that they don't know each other very well, that they don't have much in common. Once they know they've been captured, then they admit that in reality, they never met, that they only met just before they entered the airport and they were told, if you are stopped, tell this story. Because they believe that by claiming this story, the police are going to say, no, they're a couple. And so, they won't be inspected. In the reconciliation room, anti-narcotics officers inspect a suspicious bag bound for Barcelona. While inspecting the soles of the shoes, we discovered a white substance. It's explained to the man that a narco test will be performed, which will produce a color, and if that color is blue, it means it's positive for cocaine. Si bota una coloración azul celeste, o sea, caballero, si bota una coloración azul celeste, proveniente de, de coloridad, ¿está bien listo? Esta. 
We can see that the color produced by the substance is blue, which means it's tested positive for cocaine. We can confirm that the inside of this shoe, which appeared completely normal, contained drugs. So we then proceed to open up the entire shoe, and inside we find a glove full of cocaine. At El Dorado, Colombian immigration oversees 35 stations to assist the airport's 27 million yearly passengers. But for cargo flights and other unique situations, officials rely on a more agile approach. We are going to conduct an inspection on a cargo flight. We process them from the SUV. The same procedure is conducted. The difference is that the inspection takes place here because it is not easy for them to go to the airport. They undergo the same general inspection. If any requirements are not fulfilled, they cannot enter or leave the country. This SUV serves as a complete immigration post. Two officers carry out the necessary duties on parts of the tarmac, isolated from the main terminal. This is a passport verification reader. The biographical section of the passport goes in here. And the reader downloads all the information into the system. We just got a call to perform an immigration inspection on a private flight. This mobile unit also handles about 25 private flights per day from national and international companies. My partner processed the crew. They're already on board the plane. He already inspected the plane as well and confirmed that there aren't any other people on board. Back in the body scan room, anti-narcotics police detained two young passengers attempting to smuggle ingested drugs to Mexico. The officers know the drugs pose a health risk to the two carriers. Their priority now is to get the detainees transferred to a hospital immediately. It turns out the female passenger is at an even greater risk. The woman had also inserted something inside herself. She had inserted an object that contained narcotics into her genitals. This can be observed and confirmed using the X-ray image they took of her. Luckily, the woman agrees to turn over the drugs. In the case of this woman, she willingly extracted the object she was carrying. She had a cylindrical object that contained narcotics inside of her, and it was wrapped in latex. This allowed her to insert it into her genitals much more easily or less painfully, a little less uncomfortable for her. The two passengers are moved to a hospital where they will expel the ingested capsules. Only then will the police know the type of drug and the quantity the young people are carrying.
In the reconciliation room, anti-narcotics police uncover cocaine stashed in the hollowed out sole of a shoe. <laughs> It was found in the suitcase of an Ecuadorian passenger traveling to Spain with his wife. They claim they were simply transporting gifts for someone else. The woman was not arrested at this time because the preliminary evidence indicated that the luggage belonged to the man. The woman is in shock and bursts into tears. The passengers claim that the shoes don't belong to them. They say they were taking them as a favor for someone else. At El Dorado, security and safety can also involve responding to health emergencies. In this case, paramedics scramble to the aid of an airline worker in distress. The airport's ER doctor must quickly determine if the man is having a heart attack. A heart attack is ruled out. His glucose is fine. He's diabetic. But his sugar level is good. He's fine. They call because he has a history of diabetes, and they said that he was experiencing chest pain. But during the evaluation, he says he's just dizzy. The electrocardiogram is normal. The physical exam tells us it's not a heart attack, and there are no neurological issues. He has an inner ear problem, vertigo. It's not a life-threatening emergency. In the reconciliation room, an Ecuadorian couple appears shocked to find cocaine stashed in their luggage. Yeah. 
Para que obviamente dentro del proceso usted ya a informar todo esto. Ya, tranquilo, mamá. Es una situación muy difícil. It's a very difficult situation. Not only do we have to remain vigilant during the arrest to make sure he understands his rights, but he needs to understand what has to be done at this moment. And then there is the situation of the wife, who, because she is here on a connecting flight, obviously doesn't know anyone. The officers must continue with the male passenger's arrest. The woman decides to complete the trip to Barcelona. There, with the help of her family, she hopes to better support her husband's defense. Her husband is taken to the body scan room to complete the inspection. The results are negative. I was asked to take shoes and children's clothing to Spain, and there were drugs in the shoe. People here on earth are bad. There are bad people. I don't deserve this. I was just helping this woman, right? I'm not crying because I'm innocent and God is going to help me. The Ecuadorian passenger is now turned over to the district attorney, where he'll be charged for a crime that carries 8 to 12 years in jail. Paramedics respond to an emergency on a flight preparing to leave for Peru. An American passenger collapsed while boarding the plane. Each month, the paramedics respond to some 1,000 medical emergencies. Of these, only 5% are life-threatening. Después de este medicamento va a esperar una hora y después va a tener ingesta de alimentos, pues okay. porque eh, el ardor se produce es porque no ha comido hoy nada. Uh -huh. Y ahorita se quedan acá. Tengo que ir a mi vuelo. Ah, ya, ya sale. Listo. Gracias, muy bueno, amable. Hasta luego, que esté muy bien. Gracias. 
She's pale. She was dizzy, but she's not sick. The doctor was informed of everything that had happened. But yes, she can fly. Hundred and fifty anti-narcotics officers work the beat here at El Dorado every day, helping to guarantee the safety of the travelers that pass through its terminals. And in the body scan room, officers have just made an interesting discovery. Inside the bag of a female passenger traveling to Madrid, a highly suspicious waistband. While inspecting the woman's suitcase, the presence of a black colored object is observed. It's approximately 60 centimeters long and made to be worn on the body. So she tells us it's a waistband and that she was supposed to fly with it. So we proceed to inspect the contents of the waistband and a white colored powder comes out. Señora Azul, positivo para cocaína. Dale los derechos, por favor, ya los leyó. The woman is placed under arrest by the national police for possession of narcotics. Yeah. Okay, please. The normal pattern of behavior is that these waistbands are worn on the body, often taped to the body. But in this case, she was either in a hurry and planned to put it on later, or she simply was trying to avoid a pat-down. Perhaps she saw the passengers were being subjected to that procedure, so she decided not to wear it and put it in her carry-on bag instead. The passenger was carrying eight kilograms of cocaine. If convicted, she could face up to 30 years in prison. At immigration, an investigator reviews the case of an Ecuadorian trying to return to his home country. No, yo solo fui, dejé los papeles y me dieron eso y nada más. Ahí me dijeron para qué se va. Dije me voy porque tengo un matrimonio de un familiar de mi mujer. Se me dieron un papelito chiquito. Me decía la salida. Sí, en cuando un papelito chiquito. Ingresó a Colombia. Me fui a Colombia, eh, pasé ahí donde están ahí todos. Me pidieron la salida al Ecuador, mi copia, mi, mi cédula. ¿En dónde? ¿En dónde se la pidieron? Ahí donde están los cubículos. Y ahí me dieron ese papel. 
Y eso dijeron, eso es todo. Estamos haciendo una verificación de su ingreso porque no nos aparece. Ah. Nos aparece que yo ingresé por la tierra. Pero ya está el papel con el sello. Sí, pero es que estamos haciendo verificación de ese sello porque tampoco nos corresponde. A document examiner analyzes the stamp to determine if it's authentic. The document itself is analyzed. The security features of the stamp are compared with patterns we have here in the laboratory. Once we determine that the stamp doesn't have the security features typically found, then we go on to create a report. No, porque ese se lo queda ahí. Ellos me dijeron que tengo que dejarlos ahí. Eso no se queda en ningún momento. O sea, necesitamos ese para poder verificar su ingreso a Colombia. ¿No lo tiene? No, ese no lo tengo. O sea, yo no puedo viajar a Ecuador hoy día. No, hoy no puede viajar. Hoy es claro que no puede viajar. O sea, que puede ser grave esta situación. Sí, puede ser grave. Si en nuestro sistema no aparece ningún registro suyo y si el sello no nos corresponde, es algo delicado. Chuta, no se maldita de viendo, porque no, yo no he hecho ninguna, no, ninguna cosa ilegal. 70,000 passengers pass through El Dorado Airport every day. Currently, El Dorado is the third busiest airport in Latin America for passenger traffic and first for cargo. It's without a doubt an airport at the cutting edge of technology and security. Buenas tardes. ¿De dónde llega? De the police provide El Dorado Airport with officers situated in strategic areas in order to ask passengers for background information. First, we evaluate the people's behavior. We observe if they are people that are traveling or if they are waiting for someone. We also observe their physical characteristics. It gives us a checklist for the type of person who may not be traveling or waiting to greet family members. And therefore, if they are showing suspicious behavior, we approach them and frisk them. We ask them for their ID, and using our technology, we can search their ID number and verify if they have a record. If the system alerts us that the person is wanted by the authorities, the person is arrested immediately, read their rights, and turned over to the appropriate authorities. At immigration, the document examiner finishes her analysis of an Ecuadorian passenger's travel papers. He entered with an Andean visa and the stamp on that card, well, it's a fake stamp. Immigration officers will now start a legal process against the passenger and turn him over to Colombian National Police. The person must be brought to the courts in coordination with the police. He's taken to the prosecutor's office and then brought before a judge to be charged with the alleged crime of forgery. The next day, the Ecuadorian finds himself back at El Dorado. Yesterday he was charged and sure enough, the prosecutor ordered him back to the offices of the Colombian Immigration Police. And the process will be to deny him entry into Colombia and send him back to his country of origin. Without sufficient evidence to prosecute, the passenger is released and will board the next flight to Ecuador. At a hospital in Bogota, the young couple attempting to smuggle drugs to Mexico are in the process of expelling the capsules. The couple, it turns out, are complete strangers. I have typical work, at a normal job, at normal companies, earning a thousand pesos minimum. But at some point, everything got complicated. 
My daughter is four years old. And it's hard. Because it's also for her that I try to do this. To make some money. To give her better opportunities. A young guy that knew about the situation I was going through at the time contacted me. And actually, he took advantage of that. If not, I would have kept selling tamales. I would have kept selling candy on the buses. I had no idea what I was carrying. I was just carrying it as a mule. And so they told me, this is what you're taking, and take as much as you can. You get paid according to how many capsules you can swallow. If I ingested 40, it's between 6 and 7 million pesos. For 50, it's between 7 and 9 million, and so on. But right now, I think that freedom is priceless, and that you hurt yourself a lot with this, with what you do. And it hurts more when you're here, unable to see your children or see them grow up. We ingested the drugs and left immediately for the airport because they told us to get there early. Going through the body scan, I got even more nervous. When the police officer called me, I almost fainted. I got pale. I lost color. I didn't know how to act. And I said bye. Bye to my family. Bye to my loved ones. It's awful. Well, my mom fainted with the news I gave her. It wasn't easy for her. Believe me, they get you so wrapped up in it. They tell you wonderful things. They take you to paradise. You let yourself get wrapped up in it all, and it's horrible. I don't wish for anyone to go through what I've been through. Because many times, you have problems and say, no, what am I going to do? I don't have a way out of this. But you do. When you have your freedom, there are many ways out. After 24 hours, both of the young carriers are able to safely expel the capsules. They were each carrying one kilogram of cocaine, and they could both face up to 12 years in prison. Police at El Dorado arrest around 330 people per year. After Colombians, the most frequently arrested passengers are Mexicans. In the body scan room, anti-narcotics officers have detained a Mexican national for smuggling drugs. This passenger appeared extremely nervous from the moment the profiler interviewed him. Which is what motivates the profiler to put him through the inspection process. It's determined that he has small capsules inside his body. It could be heroin, cocaine, or any other type of narcotic. After reading him his rights, officers now inspect his bags. They inspect the man's carry-on bag and they don't find any narcotics. We're only aware that the man has foreign elements inside his body. 
Specifically, in cases of ingestion, once it's confirmed that the passenger has foreign elements in his body, he is transferred to the closest medical unit until the passenger naturally passes the elements from his body. Officers arrest around 160 people a year for ingested drugs. 85% of the cases involve cocaine, the other 15% heroin. If a capsule of heroin were to rupture inside the passenger's body, the consequences could be fatal. Symptoms include vomiting, loss of consciousness, and respiratory failure. Once the young man expels the capsules, he will face the Colombian justice system, and his sentence will be determined. Colombia doesn't have cartels, but it still has some drug trafficking kingpins. Most of these organizations engage with Mexican cartels and with some cartels in Europe. Airports are like the final checkpoint before leaving the country, but this is a joint operation. It doesn't just have to do with airport security. It also has to do with monitoring the roads, with eradication, and also with prevention. The role of the anti-narcotics police within the framework of airport security is very important. That's how we can monitor all of the international flights plus the critical flights. So, we help other countries with prevention by stopping the drugs from entering those countries. The number of people traveling is quite large. And there are also a lot of international flights. The smugglers hope to avoid the checkpoints. They keep sending cocaine via carriers, as they call them, or mules, as they're known elsewhere. They carry small amounts. These carriers are sometimes young men, naive young men. Sometimes their families. That is also sad for us, to see how they've fallen apart, how they've lost their values. For those who ingest the drugs, it's very dangerous to carry it inside their bodies, to have the drugs in their bodies. For the money offered them, they are risking their lives, because they not only risk their freedom, they are risking their lives as well. Understanding this issue, the manipulation of the carriers, we see sadly how some people are tricked. We can learn how to increase our security to prevent drug trafficking. How we can use not just our human talent, not just our canines, but also how technology can be applied as well to combine those forces. Because sometimes our effort is so great that our men work 12, 14 hour days just implementing our security checks. We haven't won the war, but we've won many battles. We have to keep winning battles, and we've been able to do that thanks to the participation of many countries.